Oh, we're at. So before we go live here completely and like actually start getting into this, I want to make sure my audio is right. <clears throat> now y'all are seeing everything on my screen. So I'm going to pull up my my live here. Let's see what we got. So oh, yeah. So that sounds good. Here we go. Okay. Well, let's have fun, yo. So building your first game, Deathmatch. Alright, so originally whenever I first installed Core, I did uh, hit new project and place a Deathmatch uh, project in there. I got in and I threw like two objects in and I was like, man, I, I don't know the hotkeys. I don't know nothing about this. Eventually I will learn. So I went and played a few games and I got into Island Survival. And if you guys have watched my previous videos, I have played a lot of that game. So, uh, Let's get in here. Um, I've made a, a bunch of notes about the game here, and then uh, also I have just like about two pages worth of hotkeys and stuff and different things from the options here, all these tutorials and things here. Um, so I don't show my mouse on the screen, so you guys are just going to kind of follow with me here. Um, also, let's start up core. There we go. Okay, once I get started up, we'll watch this video and I guess follow this tutorial. Okay, there's core game starting up. I'm just going to go ahead and start the video. How to build your first game. <laughs> Alright, this is gonna be fun. I'm excited. In this case, we'll be using the third person deathmatch framework. Alright, let's get started. With core open, click the create tab in the left side menu. Select create new game. Next, select view framework from the core game framework option. Select the deathmatch framework. You can also choose to test the first person deathmatch framework and still follow along with this tutorial. <laughs> now you can enter the name of your project. Don't worry, you can change it later. When you're ready, click Create. The Deathmatch framework gives you a complete game arena and shooter functionality out of the box, including a UI or user interface. You can see an arena, a health bar in the bottom left corner, the objective in the top left corner, and a message banner in the center. This is the arena for your game. Before okay, wait. Before we start customizing, <laughs> let's test player movement. Okay, so we're going to stop there. Let's go ahead into core games. Okay, so if you've never played core games, uh, this is our lobby here. Um, you can see like most engaging games over here. Some of the portals that you can go into, like active events and most active games. So that's one of my favorite places to go. I jump up here. And there we go. There's some of the games that people have been making, some of the creators in here. All you do is walk through the portal and start playing. So, let's go ahead and start making a game. So, I'm going to go over here to... Oh, yeah, we're going to go to Create. Okay. And then here's the one that I tried uh, three days ago. And Gosh, it's only been three days. Wow. Man, time has flown by. Okay, but hell, it, feel, it feels like it's been a lot longer. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one, though. Let's edit the name of it. Oh, well, that's not how you edit the name of it. Uh, actually, let's exit out of this. So, back to the main menu. 
Okay, let's see. Change the display name. There we go. So, I was just going to copy that name out, but I really liked it. Armageddon Death Machine. So, let's just delete it. Yeah. Okay, so that's very easy to delete your projects. Be careful there. We're going to create a new project. I believe we're going to pick uh, Deathmatch. Now, the menus have changed a bit here. So I've got top down frameworks, I've got gameplay frameworks, example projects that start from scratch. Okay, so it's a little different. Maybe resources here, no. Hmm. Well, let's get back to our video. Well, definitely the menus have changed. Okay, so I'm going to go gameplay frameworks. Here's a deathmatch. I don't see, I see deathmatch from top down. That's pretty neat. Let's go here and let's just create the game. Uh, I'm just going to call it new deathmatch. Deathmatch. Test. Yeah, test one. Oh, yeah. That's how easy it is. So this is a uh, pre-made. I'm guessing uh, you just maybe, let's try the, no, not click, right click, yeah. So if you use right click, you can look around and you can use WASD, I think, no. See, it's just, uh, it's not, it's not right out of the box. Very easy to understand here. I think you just zoom in. So that's how you would move. So I use the scroll wheel to move around. And then the right, uh, right click. If I hold that in, I can move my viewpoint around. Okay. And then I guess we'll just stop there for now. Uh, they were saying get ready to hit play button. So let's see. Uh, let's see what's going on there. Let's test player movement. Press the play button or the equals key to enter preview of your project as a player. So one thing, uh, learning those hotkeys is gonna make it a lot easier because when I was I did test before I jumped in like this, I, I found the play button, I, pl I clicked it, I was in there. I couldn't figure out how to get out of that. I just didn't know and I couldn't move my mouse up to click it because my mouse was stuck in, in the viewpoint. Or viewport, sorry. Yeah, yeah, they call it the main viewport. Okay, just letting y'all know that. Use the equals key. That's awesome. Very cool. Another thing about that is that the uh, the footsteps or already pre-programmed in. So let's uh let's test this out. So instead of hitting play, we're gonna hit the equals key. That puts us in the game. Now my computer I have a Ryzen 5 um, 3600. I have 16 gigs of RAM and a 1070 GeForce 8 gigabyte DDR5 I believe graphics card. So yeah then I've seen this lag whenever I was just playing around in here. So let's see, uh, let's jump. Right now we don't have double jump yet. Uh, let's try shooting. Just click it. Let's try right click, nothing. Oh, I can still do my thing. I guess I can mount here. Let's try that. Aha, there we go. Let's jump. So double jump is still not in there on this, but man, that's really neat. So I'm in. Pretty much instantly, we already have a working area to play in. Let's see if we can get through that door. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I have to open. 
very cool. Now the cool thing about this door is uh, in the future we're going to work on like game collusion from the tutorial I read about that. So if uh, we were to find this door over here in the hier hierarchy tab at the far right, if we found the door we could actually turn game occlusion off in the properties tab at the bottom once you select the door and you would just be able to walk through this. So all these objects have game occlusion on so where it stops your character from going through it. Oh, and they even have the shadows on here. Look at that. That's neat. Very, very cool. Okay, so I'm going to hit equals. Let's see. Okay, we're going to go back to the video and see what we're going to do next. That's interesting. Also include multiplayer networking by default. Because this is a crucial component of this game, it is important to test using multiplayer preview mode as much as possible. Click the multiplayer. Oh man, I'm ready to do that. Preview mode to multiplayer. Press the play button to start the preview. This will open a separate game window. <coughs> Pro tip: You can use Alt Enter to toggle between full screen and windowed mode. You can also use the window and arrow keys to dock the screen side by side. Alt enter. Let's 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 re listen to that. Let's let's do that one more time. Button to switch the preview mode to multiplayer. Press the play button to start the preview. This will open a separate game window for each player. Pro tip, you can use alt enter to toggle between full screen and windowed mode. Alt enter. So I'm going to be writing some stuff down so you're gonna have to bear with me here. Okay, and I will probably post these notes that I'm making, just to maybe make it a little easier on everyone. Um, let's see, so that was uh, when testing your game in multiplayer. Multiplayer, um, we can use Alt plus enter, I believe. Let's just make sure. Player. Pro tip. You can use Alt Enter to toggle between full screen and windowed mode. Okay. Plus enter. That will toggle between full screen and windowed. <laughs> Enter to toggle between full screen and windowed mode. You can also use the window and arrow keys to dock the screen side by side. Hmm. Let me hear how he does this real quick. You can also use the window and arrow keys to dock the screen side by side. Hmm. That's pretty neat. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> Window and arrows keys. Do hmm. do do. I know I'll forget this stuff, so I need to write it down. <laughs> It'd be nice to make like a little uh, I guess uh, yeah yeah. I'll just make a little cheat sheet with all the stuff on. It'd be pretty cool. Let's use windows plus arrow keys. To dock the multiplayer windows set each other. Okay. Put my notes up. Here we go. Okay. Well, let's try that. So now, well, let's give it a try. So we're going to go to multiplayer. We're going to have two players. We're going to hit the equals key. Okay, so this went ahead and just set it up side by side for us already. So which one do I control here? Oh, oh. 
Let's see, so now I had to click my mouse in the left one to keep it in there. Alright, so let's go ahead and find our friend here. Hiya! Wait, what? Okay, <laughs> the feet on the main viewpoint kind of messed me up there for a second. I think I see him over there. Hiya! Can I crouch? Yeah, I'm gonna be sneaky. Oh man, I think he sees me. <laughs> right, let's try shooting him. Oh yeah. Reload works. Oh, he's gone. Where'd he go? <laughs> so I wonder how many uh, spawn points they have in here right now. <coughs> so that'd be a good thing. Uh, whenever you're designing the game, <laughs> like if you guys ever played Call of Duty or anything, you do not want to uh, find a, someone who's spawn camping you. Okay. Yeah. Seems to work just fine. So real quick, um, I guess if I press tab, maybe. Uh, I want to move my mouse from this screen to the other. How would I do that? Here we go. Oh, yeah. Okay. So what I did is I just uh, used the middle click on the left screen to move over to the right. That uh, disabled my mouse from that screen and just kind of moved it over. I don't know if that's exactly how I should do it, but it worked just fine there. We'll try it, probably figure that out in the future. So, there we go. I killed the first character. All right, so we're going to try... Let's see, I think it was Windows and Enter. No, Alt and Enter. This should... Toggle between the full screen mode, I guess, since I have the right one selected, if I press it. Let's see what happens. Alt and Enter. Okay. Now let's try the other one. Okay, Alt and Enter. Very nice. And now, let's try the Windows and Arrows keys. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay, so that's just moving it around. That's pretty neat. Oh, so Windows, if uh, if you're in this uh, this size, if you press the up button, it's gonna make it go full screen pretty much. Press the down button, puts it back in the same spot. Down again is going to lengthen it. And if I hit right or left, it moves it around. So that's pretty neat. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and press equals. And that should exodus, exodus out. Okay, so that's not stopping the preview. Hmm. It's this kind of thing I was talking about. So what if I just uh, center click the mouse, middle click, and exit? And let me just come over here and stop. Okay, so now we're ready to watch the video again. Core gives you a massive library of 3D assets. Oh, we're at. Drop down the 3D objects menu to see the props and objects that can be added to the scene. Click on the nature subcategory. Choose a bush and some other props to drag into the scene. You can customize however you wish. Once you've placed your props, move, rotate, and scale the objects using the top toolbar transform tool to enhance the scene and make the arena more dynamic. One feature to note when placing objects in core is collision. By okay, so we're going to stop there and go ahead and lay some objects in there. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry for the cough in here. Get some water. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess um, we need to move around a little bit. Let's go up. Okay, so all I did is looked up and scrolled the wheel. I'm using the right click to move around. Yes, that's the last position, or those might be spawn points, actually. Yeah, check that out. I think those are all the spawn points. Yeah, there's, there's where he was that one time. Okay. So, hmm. Now, I didn't like being able to see through that window. Like, uh, that guy, the first guy could see the second guy pretty well through the window here. So, I want to try... Ah, 
we'll have to do that later because uh, I want to follow the tutorial. I was gonna add like some shades or something so I could just see like through through a crack. Okay, right. but yeah, that's uh that's just something where I've experienced gameplay inside of this already, and I want to make those changes. So let's go over here to where they were. Okay, and I want to invert that. I don't like uh that if I look down, it looks down. I I, I like it inverted. Uh, I'll just get used to it. Though. Okay, so let's lay something down over here. I wonder what this video is. This little video icon here. If I click it, I don't know if I've actually got it selected. Yeah, I've got a wall selected in the back, I think. Yeah, I don't know what to do with that. Okay, we are going to. Maybe it's because I have this kill zone thing selected. Maybe. Yeah, so. Okay, let's back up just a hair here. Let's start dropping in our trees. So they said to go to core content, and if it's gone, you can show it under Windows and core content. So I can make it disappear. Oh, man. Okay, so we're going to go to 3G, 3D objects. Go down to nature. And select it. Okay, I actually want to increase the size of that a bit. And we're going to find some bushes. I'm going to drop some bushes in. Maybe put one like right over here near the where the window there. It's pretty cool. Okay, and then they were uh, talking about resizing, so I don't like the size of that. I wonder if I can... No? Okay, so that's not resizing it, that's positioning it within the space. Okay, so let's see if it's still on the ground. Now, I believe I have a note here for how to drop it to the floor. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Scale, rotation, snap to grid, uh, da, da, translation tool. Mm. Do, do. Oh, yeah, I believe if you have the transformation tool selected. Oops. I may have hit a button over here. <laughs> so uh, if you've seen a previous video, I just got a new keyboard and added macros to it. And uh, sound effects to those macros. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So if you have the translation uh, selected, which is W, and you select an object... And then you right click that object, drop it to the floor. So let's say we have it too high. We're going to drop it to the floor. Oh man, see that didn't do it as well as I thought it would. Look at this. Let's try it again. It seems like that's the floor. Oh well. Also, um, it does drop it to the nearest object. So maybe it's like because it's right up against the wall, maybe. All right, so that's how you do that. Now let's see if we want to scale that object. Um, over here we got rotation and scale, which is weird that scale is R. Um, I don't know why they would do that, but yeah, rotation is E. So you've got W, E, R. Maybe that's why they did it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to choose scale. And what's cool here is once you have the item selected, you can snap to grid. And you can select the, the uh, amounts that that is going to scale by. So we're going to be scaling it by 0.25. And whenever you grab the center here and you scale it by dragging, I just left click and drag. I'm just going to scale it down a little bit. Okay, so let's look at it in comparison to that little guy. Looks a little bit, a little bit better. That's pretty neat. Okay, so I'm going to go back, select the translation tool again, and then we're going to back out. Let's go ahead and hit play, and we're only going to be uh, in single player. We're going to hit the equals key, and we're going to test those bushes out and see if we can walk through them. Whoa, not sure what happened there. Oh, there's our bushes. Ba -ba -boom. Oh, cool, they actually have an effect on them. Well... They're getting hit by the bullet at least. Okay, so right now I cannot hide in these bushes. 
but I can stand on top of them. <laughs> but that's not what we want. So uh, let's hit equals again. And let's go back over to our video. Change it to force off. You should now be able to walk into a bush and use it as a hiding place in the game. <coughs> That's cool. To see how well the bush works for concealment, click on preview mode. If you're a number of players in multiplayer preview mode for two, press the play button to start the preview. In the first game window, move into the bush and crouch with C. Now move the second player to the bush to see how much cover it provides. You may want to scale the bush to allow people to hide at a glance, but also be slightly visible so people can notice if they're really looking. Once you've placed your prop, let's add some materials to objects. Okay, so we're gonna stop there. So let's go try that out. So I wanna be able to hide in this bush. So it's a little bigger than the other one. We're going to zoom in, we're going to select that item, we're going to go over to the hierarchy, make sure we have our bush selected, go to properties, and then we're going to find the game collision and turn that off. There we go. So is there, I think this is autosave, but we, there's recommended that you come in here and do a save every now and then, so we're saving it, and then we are going to try it out. I want to test it in just single player. Man, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Can I jump through a window? Let's see. Wachow. Heck yeah. Okay, so this is our hiding bush. Look at that. There we are. We are hidden inside the bush. I can actually see pretty well outside of it. It's pretty nice. And shoot somebody, ba -ba boom That's pretty cool. Okay, so we can actually try this. Um, let's end that. Let's try this in multiplayer. And still, uh, did you notice that they did not show us how to quickly switch between uh, player screens? So right now I'm on the right one. So I'm going to use the right one to go over here and hide in the bush. See this bush I can't walk in. Now that'd be funny if you left like one or two bushes in the game where people couldn't get in them and they just get pissed off. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to get in here, crouch down. I'm going to look right here. I'm going to try to walk through here with the other character. Okay, so how do we get out of here? Oh, man. I really wish I knew how to get from one window to the other. Hmm, what if I hit tab? Nope. What about alt and right click, left click? Oh, that was scary. Let's reload that gun. Oh, look at that first person reload. Hmm. Yeah, I really do not know how to do this. What if I hit escape? Yeah, I did escape again. See, my mouse just goes right back over. Well, we're just going to have to deal with it. I don't know, maybe just leave that like that. Click over here. Start walking through here. Alright, there's a guy in the bush. Let's see if we can see him. Yeah, so I get to see his uh, hit marker here, his life points. And then the other screen, when I walk by, there I am. So let's go ahead and shoot him. Oh yeah, yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna end this real quick. Um, still, I don't know how to end it either. Um, I can hit equals and it doesn't do anything. So I'm gonna hit that center click again and close these and hit stop. Okay, let's go back over to our video. Pick a material and 
Can I do that to a bush? <laughs> That'd be interesting. Left click and drag, okay, that's easy. Right to apply materials to more than one object like keyword or tag, type wall into the search bar to show only the object name wall. Press enter to select everything from the search. Choose a material and drag it on to one of the walls. The Ooh. Will to all Very cool. The walls. You can also select the entire list by clicking the first object in that list, then holding shift. Okay. Try searching for each of these labels to apply materials in groups. Stairs. Let's go ahead and start with that. Okay, so before we get into stairs there, let's go play around with these walls. Okay, so that's cool. What does that look like? Ooh, that's neat. So yeah, I saw a video where uh, they actually dropped in a, in it, like an entire landscape uh, with dimensions and like hills and everything. And whenever they did this flat plane at the bottom here um, that we were just under, so this this entire I guess like sandbox I don't know this this platform um, it's just floating here in this space, but this entire space is usable. So. If we were to come up here, doo -doo -doo -doo. whenever they dropped it in, let's say we look over there in the far background, there was just mountains really, really high, and then there's hills coming through here, and they're going through the, the box here. And then uh, what they did is they just highlighted the whole entire ground, or this uh, little rectangle that, that is the floor here, and just delete it, and then you have an entire map that you can edit. All right, so... We're going to play around with the walls here. So I like being able to highlight it over here on the right pane in the hierarchy and just select the wall. I mean, that's pretty neat. But instead of doing that, we're just going to stick with the entire framework. And I actually want to drop these down. Okay. <clears throat> There's our bushes. Yeah, see, so, uh, I think we can actually create like a little group here. And we can call it something. Uh, well, let's see, that's a group. I don't want to. Yeah, I do want a group. So we're just say bushes. And then we want to drag each of these into the bushes. Okay. So that's a little little group there. I wonder what the difference is between creating a group and creating a folder. <coughs> so I could take this folder, drop it down here, call the folder itself um, foliage. There you go. So now I know all my foliage is inside of here. So that's how you could mess around with the hierarchy, I guess. And I only know how to do that because I use a lot of photo editors. So, Okay, so let's go ahead and pick a wall. Let's select this wall, and they said to hold shift and click each one. I'm guessing that the texture is going to go around everything, like the top edge, front, back, sides, within the window edges we're about to see. So then we're going to go over here. I think we were looking at... Oh man, I'm not going to be able to remember this. Let's see. Was it textures? Or materials? I believe it's materials. Well, let's go back and watch our video for a second. To show only the object name wall. Press enter. You can apply a material to multiple by dragging and dropping them onto objects. In the core content window, drop down the materials menu to see the options. Pick a material and drag it onto one of the objects in the scene, and that's it. It's pretty simple. Apply material to multiple objects by selecting them at the same time. Use shift and left click to select more objects. Oh, where? Let's try it. I'm excited. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I was scared to try this, but I mean, so far this is not that bad. I have used uh, Sculptress in the bet and. Uh, in the past, I've also used uh, SketchUp. SketchUp actually looks a lot like this whenever you're designing like um, like a home or something. And then I've tried Blender. Um, not very good at Blender. <laughs> but also, you know, I didn't have a lot of good tutorials. This is a great tutorial so far.
All right, so we're going to find our materials. I'm just going to search. I want stone. I want good stone looking walls. That's what I want. Okay. Let's try bricks chunky. There's cobblestone, layered stone. That's for a floor. Uh, screw it. Let's just do brick walls. Okay, I'm going to drag it. Ah, it didn't affect uh, all of them at once. Well, that's fine. So it seems like these windows are separate objects, and also it doesn't look like it's... It's like only going like halfway to the top here. Let's spin around. Yeah, it doesn't get this side either. Hmm. Okay, so I'd have to come in and do all of these kind of separately. Let's see if I do this. Ooh. Yeah, this might, this would take a little longer than uh than I'd want, but hey, I'm gonna do it at least with this one real quick, so we can see what it, how long it takes to do it manually like this. Do do do. Let's go over here. Let's drop this in. Okay, and then I'm gonna move over here. Wish WSD was working for me. <clears throat> I feel like I'd make the movements a lot quicker. I think this should be it. Actually, before we continue, let me ch see if I can hold shift on these. Maybe it's just because I left the the core client. Ah, man, it's still not working. Okay. So yeah, I actually want to see what this wall looks like. Um, yeah, before I do that, though, I'm going to try this. Uh, let's see, we're in the, the walls in general. Um, I want to select all walls, so let's try walls. Okay, and then I guess hold shift, go all the way down. Oh wow, that's a lot of walls. Okay, so we selected every wall in the game. We're going to drag that brick wall, and boom. Okay, and let's go look around the windows. Ah, the windows are not... So we actually need to figure that one out. So let's exit this. Let's uncheck what we had there. Let's drop these. And we're going to go up here and find... Gosh, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of detail to make this one little map, huh? All right, so we're going to go up here and find the window. Let's try just selecting windows. <clears throat> And then we hold shift again, scroll down. So now I've got all the windows selected. Let's drop in that same effect. Okay, man, this is uh, this is really fun. I'm, I'm actually enjoying this. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I'm feeling pretty optimistic right now. Man, look at that. Heck yeah, I think it got it all. Hold on, what's that over there? Oh, okay, that's just a weird looking one. It's got a floor in it. Well now, I mean, I gotta go ahead and do my floors, right? Okay, let's make these floors look good. Okay, let's see what kind of effect we want to put on our floors. I'm probably just gonna go with that very first brick one. Let's see. Uh, brick cobble floor with arches, cobblestone floor. That's a layered floor. What if we just search search uh, stone floor here? There we go. So that's all our stone floors. Kind of like that one, but that's for like outside. Mm hmm. Let's go with this simpler one. It looks a little, a little prettier. Oh, I wonder if. Everything's still selected or not. Let me drop that back. Let's uh, reselect that just in case because I don't want to cause any issues here. Let's go back over here, select that one. Hold shift. Scroll all the way down. We've got them selected. We're going to go with this little guy. Drop it on one of them. And there we go. All of our floors are decorated. This is really cool, man. I'm going to go straight up real quick. I want to see this from the top view. Oh, that's cool. 
it's so simple, but my steps look so out of <clears throat> out of place here. I wonder. Let's exit this. I wonder if there's an option here to close all the trees, like all these different trees of uh, items. Because I don't like having to go back through and select all this. <clears throat> well, I mean, that was pretty quick, but let's see if there's an option. Collapse all. So let's try that again. Let's uh, select, uh, I believe window is a little smaller. So let's say window is here. Uh, let's take this out, but now it's still out. So I wonder if we do this. Uh, collapse all. Okay, what if we control A that and then collapse all? Oh yeah, it looks, makes it look neater. Okay, so that's a good way to do it. So all I did is uh, control A to select all. So I just click one thing and then control A and then right click, collapse all. We'll close up everything um, just so it isn't so messy looking. Okay, so I'm going to try to find <coughs> our stairs, but I believe that this item here is going to be different, no? So this entire thing is one one piece. That's the stairs right there. Well, let's go over here. Let's type stairs. <coughs> I kind of want to make my stairs uh, maybe a type of brick, kind of like the wall. But maybe we go with a different type. Let's go with brick. Brick step. Uh, oh, that's cool. Little sound effect there. Um, let's go with let's go with these uh, lighter. Well, I think that's what I want with the wall. Let's go with these darker ones. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, so they're slightly different. I should have fixed all of our steps. So I think we got everything decorated here. So now. Let me see if I exit this, go back over. I'm going to go to project content just for fun. No, core content, we'll stay there. And then I want to select one, control A to select all, right click and collapse. I wonder if there's a hotkey for that. That would be nice. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry about that. I actually need to clear the search first. So control A and collapse, there we go. Okay, let's go back over and watch our video. Objects in the area. And that's it. You can apply material to multiple objects by selecting them at the same time. Shit. <laughs> okay, that's pretty fun. Yay. You can also select the entire list by clicking the first object in that list, then holding shift and scrolling down to click the last. Make sure you give everything a material. You can continue using these techniques to complete the appearance of your deathmatch arena. Try searching for each of these labels to apply materials in group. He's got a big old tree He's placed in there somewhere. It's a stump. Hey, I like the green. That's pretty cool. <coughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. That's cool. Make our own custom materials. Very neat. Yeah, we gotta have that. Gotta have that. Player settings. Okay.
Oh man, that's pretty cool. I wonder if that hurt the game at all. Now let's determine a winner and set the round kill limit. Okay, we're gonna stop there again. <clears throat> let's jump back into core. I'm excited. Okay, so right now, <coughs> if I were to hit play here, oh crap, I did multiplayer again. <laughs> Let's see, let me go ahead and exit these real quick. Uh, let's do this and stop. Let's take that back off of multiplayer and just play single for a second. Let's see if it does that glitch again. Yep, yep, it did it. Okay, so we're gonna come over here. I just wanna take a look at this magnificent map we've made. And no double jumps. Oh man, bushes look beautiful. Okay, okay, let me try these steps out. I'm slow. I want to be able to run. We're going to have to add run in later. Oh, man. Yeah, I've been playing No Man's Sky a lot, so, uh, like, I just immediately want to add the floor in right here over, over the top. It's like a walk around here. It has a, a little ledge. That'd be really neat. I can just stand over here and just shoot people. Okay, so let's get our double jump in. We're going to hit equals, equals to stop that. We're going to come over here to the hierarchy and type player settings. Okay, select that, go down to properties. And what was it? Just jump, I guess. There's jump. Jump max count. I'm not going to stop at two. I want to at least put three. Okay, so then I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to click off here and then hit save. And then I'm going to hit the equals key. And let's test it out. Let's let that glitch thing go real quick. Okay, so let's see if I can jump over a wall with three. Oh, no. One, two, three. Oh, man. One, two, three. I can do it. That's pretty neat. So three, I guess, uh, it doesn't really make it the easiest to jump over. Because if I just spam the space bar, it's not letting me get over the wall. But if I time it, I can get over it. So that's pretty neat. I'll probably leave it like that. Okay, so we're gonna exit by hitting the equals key, and I'm looking here, errors and warnings. So I've got five warnings and zero errors. I can click here to view the error log, but I think it was up here. Event log shows us our errors or warnings. Okay, set network custom properties to deprecated. Please use core object set custom property instead. Suppressing further warnings of this type. Hmm. All right. Well, I don't know what happened. Maybe we should go back down here, go to our player settings, and change our jump back to two. Let's try that. Update template from this object. Okay, let's uh, go back find jump again, see what that does. Update template from this object. I'm not sure what that was. I don't know if you should click that or not. But I did. <laughs> Alright, jump is set to 2. I'm going to save again. And you can just hit Control S. I just want to make sure you all see what I'm doing. Um, so now, let's go back in and play again. So now I cannot jump over the wall. And then as soon as we exit out of this, we'll see if we get that error warning again. Yahoo! Can we get in this? Yeah, we can. But can't get in this one, that's right. Because that one is for tree squatting. That's right. That's uh wipe your butt hands-free. <laughs> Alright, let's exit out. And we still got those errors. Same errors. Uh, I'm not sure what to do about that. It does say to set a custom property. I'm guessing that's something to do with scripting. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to do that yet. All right, so we're gonna go back over and watch our video again.
Okay. Well, I want to try that before I see him do it. Okay. <laughs> so let's uh come back over here. Now, what did we search here? Oh man. See, that's the thing. <laughs> Let me uh. Ground kill limit. Okay. Let's just search kill limit. Yeah, there we go. Go here. There's our kill limit. I guess that's what I'm supposed to be changing. Let's take that to two. Okay, and the thing is, like, whenever you're watching this, he doesn't confirm it. Like, watch. I know it sounds low, but this is hmm. supposed to be a short video. Okay. Well, it has been changed. I'm still going to hit save up here, and then we're going to do this. Um, sorry. <laughs> Put that in multiplayer. And then begin the game. <clears throat> Alright, so let's go find this sub again. I was about to say I didn't have a gun. I was upset. Oh, I know where this guy is. I'm pretty sure. He's over here sneaking again. Yeah, there he is. Let's go ahead and shoot him up. Okay. <clears throat> There's one kill. Wait, did he spawn him right in the same place? Oh no, I think he's over here. Yep. There we go. I win. <laughs> cool. So the only thing I'm seeing is up at the top left. Um, it still has like, I guess it has. Uh, it still says first to ten kills or ten enemy wins. Okay, so we're gonna exit out. Hit F11 maybe. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, let's do this and this. Okay. So we got everything done that they were showing us. Let's go back over here and watch the video. shown on the screen still tell players to shoot for 10. To fix this, search for UI text box under game instructions in the hierarchy. Open the properties window. Change the text properties to match your game's win condition. Okay, before we finish, let's figure out how we start and make the players begin the game from different positions. Okay, let's stop it there. <clears throat> I believe he said UI text. Let's just take a look real quick. the UI or user interface instructions. In this case, the game now ends after two kills, but the instructions shown on the screen still tell players to shoot for ten. To fix this, search for UI text box. Okay, well let's do it. There it is. Scroll down. Uh, where's the text at? Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna set it to. I'm gonna set it to ten again, though. T uh, ten times to win. I'm gonna put a little exclamation mark. Okay. There we go. And let's go ahead and go back over here. I believe it was kill count. There it is. I'm taking that back up to 10 because that'd just be more fun. And then we're going to save it. Okay, so let's try this out. Uh, yeah, we're going to hit play here. Equals. To make the game play. Go ahead and play it multiplayer and test this out. To change the UI. Uh, so, it looks like you need to keep it... A little shorter. I mean, it did segment or uh, start a second line, so yeah, 
That's weird. I see two at the end of it. Huh. I don't know. But let's, uh, let's go over here and see if it says like one out of ten whenever I shoot them. Oh yeah, double jump. Ah okay. Yeah, one out of ten kills. Okay. So now let's exit again. Okay, that does stop it there. Okay. So actually I wanna mess with that UI text box again. Let me see how Properties. Okay, so right there is kind of hidden. Um, I had to select that little down arrow because I was sitting here trying to scroll the wheel and look through it and I couldn't. So I come down. Um, let's just say 10 kills to win. Or for victory, there we go. And put a little smiley face on it. Yeah, because killing's fun. Okay, and then uh, I guess I could try this one more time. I'm going to click over to the left one here, and I'm going to use Windows, sorry, not Windows, Alt and Enter to go full screen. And let's go kill this guy. So it does say 10 kills for victory with a little smiley face over there. Oh, the two was the two players. Okay. And let's find them. Cool. And then we just gotta find them again. Oh man, this could be this could be fun. Oh, there he is. I wonder where else he's gonna be. I assume I'd put him somewhere over here. So go straight back to that one spot. See if he's over there again. Yep. Oh man, we need some more spawn points in here. Cool. Okay. Well, we get the picture. All right. So I'm gonna hit. Uh, so I'm gonna use the Windows key and the arrow key. There we go, I just hit Windows down, and then put it like that. I wonder... no. Let's just middle click, and exit, and stop. Okay, <clears throat> then we go back to our video. That's a good idea. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was <coughs> press V <coughs> for gizmo visibility. I'm going to have to add that to my notes. Okay, let's see. See the text box. Open the properties window. Change the text properties to match your game's win condition. Okay. Before we finish, let's figure out how we start and make the players begin the game from different positions. Search for spawn points in the hierarchy. Spawn points are where players will start the game. We want to move all spawn points to be further apart. Press V to toggle Gizmo visibility. Okay, so let's make those notes. Mic off. Mic on. Mic off. And 
You'll turn on things to be further apart. Press V to toggle gizmo visibility. Turn on a wireframe view of spawn point, the camera, and trigger boxes. Move the spawn point. My God. So earlier, that's what I was seeing when I saw the camera. Okay. And all the spawn points, so I had actually toggled that gizmo visibility. Okay, so I'm just going to make a note. This is 2C. Cameras, uh, wireframes, wireframes, and spawn points. Spawn points. Okay. My golf. My gone. Okay, so let's see what else we have here. Map the same way you would any object. Pro tip, press zero to create a spawn point at your cursor's location. Ooh. There are more editor shortcuts that can streamline your game creation flow in the core documentation. Okay. Um. Press zero to create a spawn point. At cursor location. Okay. And that's it. Core editor key bindings. Hmm. Might a little note down here. Find key bindings on the core creator hub documentation. Okay, so I guess it's under documentation. Documentation. <coughs> Core editor manual. Editor manual. And then editor shortcuts. Okay, and then that's, I'm just going to make sure I've got the website here, docs.coregames.com. All right. You now have a complete and unique deathmatch style game created entirely in core. If you're ready to test it with real human players, then you can proceed to publish your game. Check out the tutorial video and more on our YouTube channel, or read up on it in the core documentation. And make sure to tune in to our core live streams, interact with our other creators, engineers, developers, and artists in the community. Be sure to drop us a line in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching and creating in core. Woohoo! So we did it. So, uh... I could publish the game if I want. Um, I'm not going to publish it yet, so I am going to go in and make a bunch of edits. Like, uh, theirs looked pretty polished there at the end, even though it was a basic game. Um, I might add some extra levels to this, too. It would be pretty fun. Like, uh, different floors. So I really do want maybe like a high arch or something up here in the corner. Like, uh, maybe put something over here where they could stand up in there and like shoot everybody with a sniper rifle. Maybe add some new guns in here. That would be pretty cool. Okay, well, uh, that's been 
uh, how to create your first game in Core Games, and uh, I hope that was really helpful. Uh, I, I, I definitely uh, feel more confident about my ability to do something fun with this. Um, sooner or later I'll publish, and it'll be under uh, Blazing Biscuits. 